now moving on to another uh, another uh, another layer on how the folds are created is looking at grouped data so far what we have looked at is just the classes or the target class but what if the data has uh, groups as well so how do we split the data based on groups uh, one example shown here is that we have the target class which is positive negative or no response value this is the output for a particular test for a patient uh, this is the test data that would be the x and then we have the patient id so a, one patient can go through a number of different types of tests and those are listed here so this can be a separate group so how do we uh, account for the groups and this could be there could be a different types of group it could be a treatment control group uh, and the patients could be part of the data that that's also a possibility so for group splits here is the data set we have we have the x values and we have the y values as before and now we have an additional column which is groups think of it as an additional target value of y and here the idea is to perform a k fold but now instead of doing just simple k fold on target y we are performing a k fold using the group and that's right here so we specify the number of splits and then uh, when we are getting the splits uh, we need to also specify the number of groups when we are trying to get the indices so here uh, we have gkf dot split x y and then we need to split pass an argument groups is equal to groups and this groups is this particular list that is shown here there are two three groups zero first three records are zero the next three records belong to group one and the last four records belong to group two so that's how the grouping works and here is the example of that we have the x values y values that's the target and we have the groups and now when we perform a group k fold with three splits these are the indices we get uh, that are shown here and below is the train data and the test data shown here on the right hand side which is extracted from this particular data frame using the indices shown here so each row is a different iteration so three splits we have three different rows and three different train and test set so let's look at the very first one first split or train has 0 1 2 3 4 5 those are assigned to uh, though the records are th those indices are assigned to the train set and here we can see that we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 marked here by green check marks and all those y values 1 triple 0 double 2 1 triple 0 double 2 those are assigned to the train set and the remaining 2 triple 3 those are assigned to the test set moving on again the, for the next iteration next split we have 0 1 2 of these three and then six seven eight nine these four those are assigned the uh, records that those indices are assigned to the test the train set and then remaining zero two two those are assigned to the test set and that's what we have here so that's how the group k fold works now in stratified group k fold this would be similar to what we have seen before in stratified k fold the only difference is that here the stratification part comes in along with the group now as you can see in this particular chart here that was copied from scikit-learn docs each of the folds each of the splits contains uh, either one or more groups but that group is not repeated again in the other fold so we have uh, this is the split uh, zero we have this group that's in orange color then split one we have this group a red one and then we have the yellow one and in the second the third split right here we have this pink and the dark brown color so that's the 
the test data contains a different group each time and the objective of stratification then is to preserve the classes between the train and set test set after they are divided based on the groups they belong to and here is an example of that we have the stratified k fold this is how this is uh, coded now i'm not showing an example here because uh, when i tried to run it i was not able to import this library sklearn dot model selection i was not able to import the stratified group k fold for some reason so you can try running this if you run into a problem uh, like me uh, you can feel free to post a comment uh, below the video uh, i'll try find a way around this i'll try to answer that question now moving on let's look at leave one group out previously we have seen leave one out so now this is the same extension of the same idea except that now we have the group um, that we'll be considering while performing the folds and here is the implementation we have leave one group out and we can get the splits and as you can see here we need to specify the groups the groups is equal to groups and these are the groups that are specified and output then looks something like this so the very first split has three four five six seven eight nine indices so these records are these indices are assigned to the train set that is shown here and the remaining uh, zero one two indices records are assigned to the test set that is shown there similar to leave p out this is the leave p group out the implementation is similar we have leave p groups out and we can specify the number of groups that will be left out and here is an example of that we have in the first split we have six seven eight those are the groups that are considered for the train set and that's what we have and we have left these two groups so group zero group one are left out only group two is considered in the second case we have indices three four five three four five those are considered for the train set so just to have one group one and then two groups that is zero and two are uh, elected out of the train set and those are then considered for the test set instead so that's how the leave p groups out works now similar to shuffle split there is also group shuffle split and as you can see here shown by the dotted lines uh, each of the iterations considers uh, different groups so in the, uh, in the split one we have this group uh, with light blue and the pink color and in the next iteration we have other other groups and so on for the test set so the according to the docs we have uh, this generates a sequence of randomized partitions in which subsets of groups are held out for each split so the groups are randomly chosen and for each split and here is a code for that we have group shuffle split number of splits specified is 4 s side is 0.5 and this is how the split looks like we have the indices 0 1 2 3 considered for train sets 0 1 2 3 all belong to uh, that belong to groups 0 and 1 and the y values are shown here for the train set in the second split 2 3 6 7 so 2 3 6, uh, six and 7 so we have 3 and 1 chosen for the train set and rest of it for the test set and the split is 50 50 and so we see same number of records for uh, both the train and the test set now in addition to the all the methods that we have seen for performing the splits or creating folds on the train data set for cross validation there is also something called as predefined fold splits so by this method the idea is that we can label 
the records uh, uh, so that they can be counted either for the train set or the validation set. So for example, when using a validation set, set the test fold to zero and all other samples that are part of the validation set and minus one to all other samples. Now uh, there's another repetition here using cross validation iterators with split and split train and test sets. So here is the implementation code for that. We have the X and Y, we have the groups. Then we can get the train index and test index by using group shuffle split in this case and then get the split indices based on that and pass on those indices to X and Y to get the values for X train and X test. And here those are the uh, shapes written for that. Finally, uh, we have another type of split which is called a time series split and this is interesting. Uh, again, this is the plot from the scikit-learn docs. The idea here is that you begin with first few rows, assign some of part of that to test set, part of that to train set, then you increment and get additional rows from the train data, again split into train set and so Subsequently, towards as you iterate through, eventually you consider entire data set for the train and test set. That's what this progression is showing here. And this will get clear when we look at the actual example. So here is the implementation. You specify a time series split and n splits is equal to three. And then you get the indices as standard and get the train and test sets. So here is the example. This is the data set we have. So in the very first split, what we are trying to do is uh, we are considering one, two, three, four, and one, two, one, two, three, four. This is considered for the train set and this record for the test set. In the next iteration, we consider the first four records for the, I think, yeah, first four records for the train set and the fifth record for the test set. And in the last iteration, we consider all these uh, records for the train set and the last one for the test set. So that's one variation of how you can perform splits in the train data set for cross validation purposes. Now, before we end this video, I just want to mention when is it a good, when is, when is it a, a good to shuffle the data and when it is not. In general, when you have a data set, for example, you have these records Y, so it looks like first half of the records are belong to class zero, second half belongs to class one. In that case, you definitely want to use the shuffle so that you pick uh, classes zero and one. Otherwise, if you just use simple uh, split, then you might end up with only class zero in the train set and only class one in the test set. And if you have a time sequence data or a data that is dependent on the previous records or the uh, next records, then you probably want to avoid using the shuffle because it could break the continuity of the data uh, between the train and test set. So that's something to think about. And finally, we have uh, a slide on permutation test score. So this is a method of scoring where we can say if the classifier is doing better than just a random chance. And the way this works is you have this data set on the left, which is X. And then on the right hand side, we have the same size and shape of the data, but it's all random. So what the idea is to fit a classifier on both and then quantify as to which one as a, which one has a lower p value to uh, to find which is uh, better and here is the implementation we have the data in orange then number of uncorrelated features you know, we have specified two this should be same as what we have in the original data set x and here is the classifier you know, of the k fold stratified k fold and then we are finding the permutation on test scores right here for the X as well as for the random values. And this is how it looks. On the left hand side, we can see that the red line is 
uh, away from this data set and we have a very uh, the p value that we have is 0 0.09 uh, here the p value is 0 0.75 and so the score on this data is 1 so what this tells us is that uh, the there is dependency between the features and the target labels and so the score is better than the permuted data whereas on the right hand side you can see that the score obtained by the original randomized data is uh, the data the score is there but it's very poor score and then that's why it, we have 0.25 instead of 1 and the p-value again is very large uh, it was 0.7 so in this case it tells us that the features that are that were in the dat random data do not uh, have any dependency uh, on the, the labels no feature label dependency in the, on the original data so that was it for this video i hope in this video you learned all these methods on different types of fold here is a summarized chart for that uh, that you can look at and kind of think about again how each fold works and which type of uh, splitting maker method would be suitable for the project that you are working on and the type of data that you have if you have any comments or suggestions please feel free to post them in the comment section below i hope to see you all in the next video until then please like share and subscribe thank you